in episode 400 of the Clive Barker podcast. Jose and Ryan are joined by Ed and Nina to celebrate our 400th episode by showing off our Barker and related collections and telling our stories and memories behind them. This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram Celebrate Imagination. Don Bertram Celebrate Imagination shop is dedicated to benefiting the arts and medicine program at Texas Children's Cancer Center. Over 50% of the proceeds go to the Texas Children's Cancer Center where artist Don Bertram volunteers monthly. Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and celebrates and continues to be inspired by his art. He uses that inspiration to help kids through the Texas Children's Cancer Center and we couldn't be more thrilled to continue to work with him. There's a news feature video that shows Don working with the kids at Texas Children's Cancer Center and his artwork. Click the side banner at www.clivebarkercast.com to find links to the video and his Etsy shop where you can buy his prints, books, and support this wonderful program. Well, welcome. This is episode 400 of the Clive Barker podcast. Uh, We're revisiting something that we did way back uh, 10 years ago on episode 33 in February of 2013. Yeah. Um, show off your stuff. Back then it was on Google Hangouts and, and the video uh, quality was pretty bad. Um, but we're doing it again. Uh, we're showing off our stuff again. Uh, so the only rule here is when you show off something, you got to tell the story of that thing. It could be the story of, you know, your your personal connection to that release or that particular uh, that particular book or movie or whatever, you know, or poster or item or artwork, um, however yeah. you want to do it. That sounds but good. That, that's the rule. Um, other than that, you know, we can just kind of go nuts. Um, who, so who wants to go first? Hey, I think uh, I, we're just going to uh, quickly introduce that we got uh, Ed and Nina with us from Synovium yeah. today. And we posted this uh, Zoom meeting link on our Discord server and uh, the Clyde Barker listeners group and our podcast page. And so anybody um, of our listeners who sees that is welcome to pop in. So who knows who's going to pop in? Maybe someone will stop by and show us some stuff. Um, So I think I could, I could get started with something if that's okay. Well, I would, I would like to introduce myself. This is Ed Martinez, your blind podcaster from the San Francisco Bay area. And I just wanted to say hello. Hey. Hey. And hi, Nina. Hello. <laughs> this is Nina Martinez. Yeah. My wife. <laughs> and you guys, uh, of course, our, our listeners uh, will recognize you from our other episodes in case this is the first time they're watching. Uh, yeah, this is the Clive Barker podcast. We talk about all the things Clive Barker ish. And uh, you can see my banner back there. Uh, yes. And you this can is see the sound of my voice. <laughs> a banner behind Ryan on his little office there. Um, I myself have got a bunch of like movies in the back and some movie posters over there and stuff, but I've got a whole couch full of like interesting things um, that uh, I'm about to show. So I guess I could start. Yeah. So we need to say the story of the item. Okay. So here's, I'm going to open up with a really cool deluxe Clyde Barker book that I have in my collection. And uh, it's going to be this one. He's going to get it. He's coming back. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So back in, was it 91, Ryan? Yeah. Or 1990, 1991, Clive Barker wrote The Thief of Always. And he sold that story to um, HarperCollins for like a dollar, correct? Uh, Because he wanted to write a story for children. And... This is the anniversary edition of The Thief of Always that came out in 2017, I want to say. Let me just check this real quick. Yeah, by uh, February Inc., right? Right. February 2017, they put out this deluxe edition of The Thief of Always, which at the time, I think it was $425, right? But yeah. um, because we were at the time uh, very much in touch with the people at... Uh, Seraphin, they uh, sent us some complimentary copies, and it's a gorgeous edition. It comes with this amazing wraparound cover of Mr. Hood's house, and then on the other side, you can see Harvey Swick. It's painted by Clive Barker, Mm -hmm. and it comes with all sorts of interesting uh, bonus material, right? Like 
for example, you got uh, facsimile pages of the actual manuscript of the original story. And uh, cool. it's just such a wonderful deluxe edition. It was completely illustrated by Clive Barton. Mm -hmm. Flipping and, through. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it certainly means a lot to me. Um, and I think it means a lot to everybody who's a long-term Clyde Barker fan. You know, whenever you think about the Thief of Always, um, it's, it, it takes you back to your childhood, think. right? <laughs> yeah. My story with the, with the Thief of Always, not with this particular edition, but, you know, was just that it was the first, it was the, actually the second book signing of Clive's that I ever went to at Golden Age Collectibles at Pike Place Market in Seattle. Uh, and so it was a book signing and we had to, we could buy, bring one book, uh, we had to buy a copy of the book from there and that would give us a, a place in line. It had a number on the ticket. And then, um, and, and then we would go through the line and we could bring two other things to sign. And, uh, and then he had a, a, a live QA session afterwards in a little theater in the, in the Pike Place Market. And it was so cool. He, uh, he talked about the upcoming, you know, Hellraiser, uh, Hellraiser bloodline. Uh, and he, he talked about, um, uh, he, he, and he took questions from the, from the public, which some of that was a little embarrassing, but, uh, <laughs> there was one lady that, uh, that said, you know, that part in the great and secret show. And he goes, no, which part? And she goes, you know, page 63. <laughs> and he goes, I'm sorry, I don't memorize all the pages. Well, actually, his voice wasn't as gravelly back then. He says, I'm sorry, I don't memorize all, all the pages of, of uh, you know, of my books, and there's different editions. He goes, you know, page 63. Oh, my oh, God. No. Yeah. That is a little awkward, yeah. That yeah. is funny. <laughs> that but naughty it's, part. Yeah, yeah, but it's such a yeah. magical... Uh, story and uh it, it's they did such a great job on this seraphim inc you said right ryan that, yeah that was... and it's ink because that's like their their publishing division yeah or it was uh, i don't i don't know if they're still doing anything with that but uh these anniversary editions are always super cool even though they can yeah. be a little on the costly side um but when you have this book on your shelf it's it's really beautiful it's got this black uh not black blue blue box uh protecting the yeah. book and it's got all these elements like uh what do you call these things ryan uh dandelions yeah oh, the, yeah i think that's a dandelion yeah dandelion seeds and and snowflakes on one side of it and the bo the face of the box itself oh, yeah. the it's kind of looks seasons, a little seasons right in the it's the four yeah. seasons of the holiday house it's summer at the bottom where it says Clive yeah. Barker because you got there's a big sun and golden and yeah. talio. And then you've got the leaves for autumn here on this side. You got the snowflakes on this side. And on the top, you got uh, spring, right? Um, the four seasons, Mr. Hood's house for every we're, day um, is a year. With Joel, we're reading The Thief of Always to him for bedtime right now. Or actually, I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So oh, that's so cool. We, we just Very got cool. past the part where uh, Harvey turned into a vampire, and now he and uh, he and Harvey are starting to plan their escape. Oh, That's Harvey wonderful. and Wendell, cool. I mean. Harvey and Wendell are trying to plan their escape. Right, Wendell. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I see that you also had the same edition as I did, Ryan. Um, oh, yeah. Should we give yeah, oh, Ed and it. Nina, should we yes. give Ed and Nina a, a chance to talk about their stuff? What do you yes. guys got? So here is a uh, demon putting putting out his eyes, and it's uh it's about thirty seconds, and we'll give it. What do you see? Get it started. So uh, first we see a front on view of the demon putting out his eyes figurine. Now we close up on his face, where you see his his fingers like disappearing into his skull sockets. Now we're looking down on him, so we're seeing his horns and the top of his head looking down. Like, and now we're looking from one side, and it's a profile <laughs> of his body. And now we're looking from the other side, and it's a profile of the other side of him, and uh, showing his muscles. And, and that's it. Yep. Okay. And that's it. <laughs> now. This was a, a a vinyl model kit that uh -huh. was put out, I believe, by Sideshow Collectibles a long time ago, like in the 90s. And, um, you know, it was in multiple pieces and had to be glued together and all the, you know, the yeah. flat and stuff had to be cut away with a exacto hobby knife. And the, um, you know, the vinyl is kind of tough and you can really 
cut yourself if you're not careful. So you got to sure. like, warm it up with a blow dryer or something. And then the parts are popped together and glued with hot, you know, su- cyanoacrylate, you know, super glue type glue. And then uh, filled it with foam, you know, like that expanding urethane foam that you spray in a, a can. Some people use it, you know, like if their door is hollow, they can spray it in their door for insulation. Right, well, right. Put that inside of a model kit too. So the, the figure is hollow when you fix all the parts together and glue it together. And then you can spray the foam in there just to fill all the hollow cavities. And that's what I did, you know, and then paint it any way you want, you know. I've seen various paint jobs. Like if you Google it, you'll see like a pale skin paint job on one version. And some people have painted it to look bronze. You know, this one's basically brown, you know, like a bronze base color. And uh, I didn't finish it. I was going to put like a patina, like it has green, you know, how bronze can sometimes get greenish and stuff. In the yeah. Cracks. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that, uh, that kit was, uh, like you said, it was from Sideshow Inc. And I think it was sculpted by Matt Falls from yes, uh, yes. from that pen and ink illustration by Clive. And Correct. does yours have the engraved ba- a statue base? Yes, but um, I didn't, you know, finish it or anything. Like, in other words, again, that's a vinyl piece and it's kind of like hollow on the bottom. So it sort of deforms, you know, unless you fill it with plaster or something like that. And I still have it, but I never did you know, fix the base because the base has like a kind of a bas relief of a, you know, Clive design. And I think I molded it and cast that in a separate, like a translucent material. I was experimenting with it. I thought I was going to make something like almost like a stained glass window where you could make the base have a, you know, like a different purpose than just sitting on the floor, you know, it would be like sitting in a window sill or something. That's cool. So what's the uh, purpose of filling it with the foam? Is it just for the feel when you pick it up for the noise so it doesn't no, sound too it hollow? Really is, it really is because... Or for structural kits, support. Yeah, uh-huh. vinyl kits that are hollow. I see. Just set it on the shelf and heat from the sunny hot days and cold, you know, will cause the vinyl to expand and contract slightly. And if that were to happen, sometimes a vinyl kit, like, you know, all the screaming kits are also vinyl. And certain ones like the ones that don't have a skirt you know like chatterer for instance which just got two legs instead of the skirt like butterball has a skirt pinhead has a skirt they are more you know bottom heavy and so they don't want to jump off the shelf these vinyl kits if they are not made properly and they don't have some sort of filler in them they can sometimes warm up and sag slightly and just kind of take a nosedive off the shelf Sure, and especially over there in California, where it could right, get a little right. warmer. Hot um, weather, you know. I, I'm seeing the the kit that you're talking about. I'm familiar with it. I don't have it, but I'm I'm looking at it on that website for Firefly Design. This used to be where you had some stuff too, right? Right. All, a lot of my re, you know reviews and interviews that were published in Synobium, I also let this guy you know who had this uh, um, Gremlins in the Garage, I believe, is the site. That's right. And uh, the painter for the picture that I'm looking at was Tom Gilliland. Oh, yeah. He was a brilliant painter. He he uh, worked for, he did some really nice kits for Rick Baker, you know, his own personal, Rick Baker's personal collection. That's a cool item. Um, it always made me wonder why the demon is putting out his eyes. Um, if it's just... Um... Does anybody know from Clive? Has Clive ever talked about this piece? That's a good question. I, I I don't know. I would have to look it up, but I don't remember anything that he might have said about it. Yeah. But can you imagine the visions it would take for a demon in hell to put out his own eyes in horror? Oh yeah. yeah. I wonder if Phil and yeah. Sarah know anything. You know, like if they've ever talked to Clive about this particular piece. Yeah. It is a very cool cool piece, and I love the way that Matt Falls uh, sculpted it. Uh, oh yeah. A very smooth demon with these uh, textured horns. And then he's got this vascularized uh, arm and forearm for the demon. And it's, it's got all that anatomic detail. It's really, really cool. I, uh, yeah, the, the, the fingers going in his eye sockets, are, aren't they the horns popping out the top of his head? Oh, wow. Okay, now I cannot unsee that. that uh, yeah, no, I, I've thought about that too. I mean, it, it's, it seems like it could go either way. 
right? That's it, it could right. Be, those could be either horns or they could be his fingers coming out. That's the right. That's right. The, the person who painted these usually puts the fa- the horns coming out of the head with some blood at the base of the horn. So it could be that they're being pierced out from underneath the skin. From inside. Yeah. 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 That's cool. That's that's the, a really cool thing. It's pretty rare, too. It's like, white. have you ever met anybody or known any? Have you ever seen one in person or anything? No, just uh, just the one that was on that Firefly design uh, where you published all your stuff. Um, I mean, and- like me, too. It's like out of all the conventions that I've gone to and of all the model contests, and there have been many, you know, like we've seen many model contests. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen this kit, you know, at a model contest or, you know, I don't know any other fans that own it, you know. It's yeah, me neither. Rare. I think uh, the 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 way that I found out about this was through the old website, the Hellbound ha- uh, Web, which I'm not sure it's still up, but uh, they used to have a section. And I think a lot of the stuff they had in the section of collectibles was pictures of your collection, uh, stuff that you had sent them. Um, so that's probably where I saw this is probably some image that you sent them to put yeah, on their collectibles. It for Synobium, of course, you know, we, we reviewed it and put pictures of it and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> And if I can show an item from my collection that's very personal to me as well, well I'm I going haven't to... had a turn yet, Jose. Oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead, <laughs> Ryan, go for it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, I'm gonna switch my camera. What have you got? All right. So, kind of more broad strokes. I'm gonna show off my my bookshelf here. So. Right there are all the the um, Blu-rays and DVDs and video games yeah. and soundtracks. And then as we go up here, we've got uh, books, you know, compilation books and books written about Clive Barker. Yeah, you're gonna have to speak up a little bit because I think uh, yeah, I you're away, away from, from your microphone. microphone. Yeah, can you hear <laughs> once me you okay? turn your head away from the microphone. It- makes it yeah he's using the remote camera which is you can switch zoom from your computer camera to your cell phone camera so he can walk around with it yeah Uh all right so yeah this is my this is my uh my bookshelf here and there's a a commemorative pinhead glass we got oh yeah uh, from the uh the that Clyde Barker thing. Society, short-lived yeah. Clyde Barker Society. There was yeah. a, a a laser etched uh, a pinhead profile on a glass with a red bottom. And there's it's the, like a pint uh, glass. The um, puzzle. The lament by, configuration yeah, by Le, by uh, Pyramid Gallery. And then oh. Jump Tribe. Hey, look at all those jump tribes up there. And then. I'll uh, step away from the microphone here really quick just to show you the posters. Are oh, they look framed? at those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are framed. Yes, they're Nightbreed uh, uh, Cabal Cut uh, posters, and they got all sorts of signatures from all the actors that were in it. Cool. And uh, now now he's showing us uh, some Lord of Illusions poster, a picture of himself with Clive, which is a beautiful picture. Could you go back to that one afterwards, Brian? Yeah. What year was that? Uh, 2011. 2011. Yeah. 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 Okay. Looking good. Another Hellraiser poster. Uh, who's who's that signed by? I see Doug Bradley, Simon Banford. First film. Yeah, the first one. And uh, to Ryan C. Winhell, Nicholas Vince, Simon Banford. Wow, come to mother. You met. Yeah, and and uh, says come to mother, and there's what I think is Claire Hagen's signature as well at the bottom. That's pretty cool, man. I got a Hellbound poster here ready to show after um, after um, you you're done. And there's the the boy in the wings. It's the drawing that Clive made of an unborn Joel. Oh yeah, his son, right? And you've got a big gigantic Abarat poster with uh, the wizard. To Ryan and Joey and Jennifer, of course, dedicated by Clive Barker. Love and love and kisses, smisses. Yeah. Love and smisses, Clive Barker. Oh, that's gorgeous. The wizard with get... all the hats. The... Yes, that's right. Yeah, uh, we got a Nightbreed poster with uh, Cronenberg holding the mask and the knife, and Midian in the back. Nice. And, and it's also signed. 
and he's that's got a like nice a nice one. That's a nice yeah. Question. That's a a lot of stuff and where the magic yeah. happens in Clive's and and Ryan's office. Oh, and also <laughs> my uh, my art books and laser disc collection. Oh wow! Look at all those Imaginer books. I see the visions of heaven. I have the laser disc of Hellraiser too, the one that came with the script. The script. Yeah, yes. I have uh, I have both that and the and the bare bones laser disc there. Actually, I can yeah, so pull cool. one of those out. Let's see. Yeah, let's do it. The script has a like a red cover, I think. <laughs> Ryan went for the uh, broad approach of showing the shelves. Oh, there it is, Lord of Illusions laser disc signed by Clive in golden ink. We nice. have the Nightbreed a laser disc as well, which could have a better cover, but that's just my personal opinion. Well, it's, this is in a this is in a sleeve. There we go. No, yeah, I'm saying that instead of making a square cover for Nightbreed, they decided to just fill the sides of the vertical vhs cover with uh, a drawing of the laser disc underneath so yeah. <laughs> kind of a cop out <laughs> yes hellraiser. i also have that hellraiser um laser disc script signed i bought that in uh oh. in one of the conventions i went to oh, you mean separate from the box set yeah separate there was a oh. vendor once uh when i went to see the cabal cut in um uh california and yeah, uh the box set has like this black box that you open it up and there's like an embossed hole that the script fits into and yes then the, it sits on top of that you know that's what ryan is showing now the laser disc with the um uh, silver pins just the silver pins floating in space in front ah, look at that to... okay there we go okay you're jerking it all, all over the place ryan <laughs> <laughs> is that the tin is that the anchor bay no, this is the laser disc you guys were just talking about. Oh, the laser disc. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just took it out of the box. I see. Oh, I love that embossed, embossed uh, part where the yeah, script the black, goes in. The black on black and the outside is yeah, embossed. and it's got the skinless Frank embossed into it, just uh, peeking behind the door. Yeah, I don't know who published that. Was that Anchor Bay made that laser disc, or who made that laser disc? And everybody's favorite. Transmutations. Transmutations, Ryan. Do you know who released that laser disc? That black one. Uh, I thought it was Anchor Bay. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Might be. Uh, no, it says Lumi Vision. Lumi Vision. I don't know who that is. Luma okay. Vision. Oh, Luma Vision. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it must have been yeah. like a Blu-ray. That's a hey. that's a deluxe version, man. It is pretty cool. So, Ryan, it looks like you pretty much just showed about half of your collection in, in, in one yeah. single go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was broad strokes. But if you want to dig into anything, we can do that, too. I've got books that are autographed and books with artwork drawn in them and stuff like that. But we can save that for another turn. Yeah. Um, okay, who's next? <laughs> I'm going to show these because we got Ed and Nina here. And I'm showing off my very few, very rare copies of Synobium. I've Yay. got number one right here with the lament configuration on the cover in red paper. Cool. cool. And we've got Synobium two. Oh, I think. blue one. No, it's the three. It's the three. third one with, with chatter. chatter. Did you make this cover, Nina? No, I think that's Guy Conrad. Conrad, that's right. I, Gun, I, Guy I Conrad. The, I made the here's, an, the here's another one with the dragon. It's uh, the dragon number that four. was Guy, who wasn't it? Yep. Guy Conrad did a good job on all these like illustrations. That. The, That's and, really Clive. And this one is one of Clive's covers, right? You guys had yeah. two or three of those? That's yep. cool. That's yeah. the issue where Ed and I got, got started together. Like I came up on board. She met five. she yeah. met me right when yeah. that cover came out. You got hitched. <laughs> and, and my artwork was the first issue. And look at this. This uh, Clive Barker cover issue has uh, the weekend tapes where you guys did a series of interviews at the LA Weekend of Horrors in 91. And this one, you guys interviewed Bob Keen. Oh, yeah. Yep. That was amazing. That's when I got the artwork of the box from Bob Keen. Here's and another Simon piece of artwork. Face. The Simon another, Safe. Yeah. Here's another piece of artwork oh, by yeah, Clive. Yeah, that's another real Clive, yep. At the end of uh, this uh, issue. And yeah, unfortunately, I only have like four issues of Synovium. And I know that you guys made a lot more. We'll so, have to fix that for you. Yeah, we'll have to fix that. But uh, and there was an issue zero that 
you guys, you know, sent me images of, but uh, yeah, that was pretty rare. <laughs> that was pretty rare. And uh, that, that was my collection of synovium. I only have those four copies, but I treasure them. And they're really cool because ever since I've been a Hellraiser fan, I've heard uh, on the internet about this, this publication, this fanzine, this magazine that existed called synovium. And it's like, it's always been kind of this mythical thing for like, you know, Hey, if you were a cool Hellraiser fan back when Hellraiser came out, you know, this was the stuff to collect. This was where you got all these interviews about, how the movie was made and who worked in it and all that stuff. And um, it's a myth. It's a legend. It's, it's, it's legendary. Like it is legendary. Can can say man. Synobium five times <laughs> and issue will show up. And, and then Ed's going to show up behind me. <laughs> 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 or Diane's going to show up behind me with her fur mask. <laughs> That'd be great with her first Sona. Um, yeah. So the Synobium. Very personal to me because now we got, you know, Ed and Nina usually join us and uh, we've known each other through the Hellraiser uh, forum and all that stuff. So that's another well, like thing that each other for a really Yeah, I don't think that's a lot been of like 20 years. Years. Hasn't it been a long time for you and Jose? Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, well, we we started communicating, you know, a long time ago, but we physically years. started phone calling and, you know, texting and everything about yeah. five years ago or so. So that's um, if you guys have synobium issues out there and you're looking for a buyer, I'm your I'm your guy. Send them to me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so do you guys got so another item there? What's next? Well, what you... let's see. We've got um, uh, we just transferred the one of the videos to both of you through something called we transfer that transfers a large cool. file quickly. Um, let's see, we have the storyboards that's, um, right. oh. published in the, the Hellraiser Chronicles book. Do you guys, either of you own the Hellraiser Chronicles book? Oh yeah. I it's sure do. You know, from, uh, Hellraiser three. Yes. It's a great so book. This, this set of storyboards. So I guess you could place it anywhere, um, as we're talking, cause it's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so th I, what I did was I, uh, I'll send you a video that shows the cover of the Hellraiser Chronicles and it'll show the page where these particular storyboards are seen. Can and you then, see that right now on your well, that, yeah, I'm seeing it right now on my screen. Can you screen. tell what page it is? No. And Ryan is, is uh, showing the camera the cover of the Hellraiser Chronicles as well. Excellent. And then what? we'll see the, uh, the storyboards themselves on paper. Uh, what yeah, movie are the storyboards from? The third Hellraiser? Hellraiser that whole book is nothing but Hellraiser 3. Yeah, so it's Hellraiser 3, and it's the part, the storyboards depict the sequence when uh, Pinhead is in the church, and he takes a pin out of his own head. Yeah. It's, got a worm. it's got a worm on it, and uh, I believe he, he uh, feeds the worm, tries to feed the worm to the guy, and puts the, puts the nail in his own palm. He gives it's himself a, the, uh, um, so, the yeah. stigmata effect of christ having the nails piercing into yeah. his palm. yes and it's a perverted uh version of the holy communion where he's like he's feeding him like a worm yeah uh, that's pretty cool or a piece of his skin yeah pinhead being very naughty in the church so <laughs> i have a great those, sequence i have those storyboards yeah, yeah so do you know who drew those storyboards paul catlin okay cool paul catlin you say and he also drew the designs for the uh, the torture pillar. Oh Hell yeah, that 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 statue. Um, yeah. So and those some are... of them were very organic. Some of them were not like a rectangular. You know, the statue looks like I guess you call it a column or a rectangular cube. And some of his drawings were really organic. They looked like something out of. Um, uh, you remember the Clockwork Orange? That rich couple had those really weird sculptures. You know, um, yeah, they had, the penis, yeah, yeah. They kind of looked like that, like kind of weirdly organic and not column. Well, I have those too. Like in other words, yeah. when Bob Keen was leaving his workshop from, you know, one location to, you know, he lives in America now, by the way, and uh, he sent me a big package that had photos and drawings and you know all kinds of things amazing collection of stuff that i now have in my collection and 
these drawings, you know, these storyboards were part of it. And I also have, you know, in the uh, Hellraiser Chronicles, there's also the pictures of the um, policeman having his handcuffs used to pierce through his own tongue. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have those storyboards as well. Wow. That is really cool. And some stuff from Nightbreed and just a whole collection of wild stuff. Yeah, I, most of the stuff that was shown in the uh, Hellbound Web website, that was stuff that you guys sent them, like the storyboard images that they had over there. Those yep. are the sequences that you have. Um, yep. And I remember getting a copy of the Coral, Coral Draw files with the panels of the box. And I still have those. So I still have those. And I, I, I'm sure those came directly from Bob Keen. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, Bob Keen gave me those. Um, when we did the interview, which is published in one of those issues of Synobium, I, you know, was ha myself and, and, uh, Diane happened to have a table at a convention, you know, Fangoria Weekend of Horrors and Bob Keen and his crew of guys who Martin Mercer was on his crew. They came walking through the dealer's hall. You know, they happened to be living in Los Angeles for a time, you know, while they were working on waxworks you know, for Anthony Hickox, Tony Hickox, the guy who directed Hellraiser 3. Oh, yeah, that's right. And so while they were in town, you know, they came and hit up the convention. And, you know, at these conventions, you often will find like tables, you know, other companies' tables like the Bermans who are there selling, you know, plaster, clay, foam latex, you know, all those, the supplies that they sell in their store and these guys were there and they're like oh man we need some of this stuff and so they were loading up on materials and stuff you know to take back to their workshop there in los angeles while they were working on waxworks too and so they invited you know myself and diane and we happen to have a couple of friends with us also to come to the set you know and and visit you know so i did and i brought the video camera with me and i videotaped and then i also you know interviewed bob keen and he just pulled out of these file drawers you know he said hey ed here and he handed me the designs from simon sace's you know black and white flat artwork of the original hellraiser cube that's something man that is something i'm, I'm looking at the storyboards right now uh, on what used to be the Hellbound web, because that website doesn't have that anymore. But um, yeah, I see. Are the, you using the Wayback Machine or something to get to it? Yeah, I use the Wayback Machine exactly. I'm looking at some Hellraiser three storyboards where he's taking the the piece of flesh from his chest and he's going like, "This is my body," and then he's like yeah, forcing, he's feeding, it. He's feeding yeah. it to the guy. And this one says it's drawn by John Floyd of Image Animation. At least that's the credit here on the the storyboards in the Hellbound web. But I, you know, I would take that with a grain of salt because you guys, you guys probably know better than that. Um, but yeah, and there were a lot of drawings and models. You'll as see well. the signature in the video. This, yeah, yeah this in our video, you build pieces. It. Various yeah. people did storyboards. Not I, I see the Paul Caitlin um, signature on the Doc Cenobite design that you guys have, uh, the JP Cenobite designs. Um, and uh, the JP Cenobite designs and, and the Pillar of Souls too, right? Because uh, I'm seeing, I, I see what you mean now because it, it wasn't supposed to be like a quadrilateral column thing. It was more of like this weird crouched body shape, like bondage kind of thing, right? Um, where you well, see he had so many some different them, designs. Yeah, yeah, some some of them that's right. Like a, like a heart with spikes all through it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I think I'll rescue this from the They're Wayback Machine. Shaped, and I'll, I'll make sure that we add these images to the, the show notes as well so people can see the designs that you have. Um, do you also remember having a, a Cenobite maquette made by Martin Astles of Image Animation? It's like a no, big fat I, Cenobite. I, I... I've seen that. I know that what you're talking about, but I don't have that. No. Okay. Okay. Because I'm seeing that here in the Hellbound Web too. It's kind of cool. But the JP Cenobite designs and the Pillar of Souls, that's all in, in your collection, right? Right. Cool. Cool. I'll save all these images and give them over to Ryan so we can put them in the show notes. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's always great to have uh, storyboards and stuff like that. It really gives you insight on how they planned out and blocked out the, uh, the scene when they were thinking about it. I mean, cool. the guy, Paul Catlin, 
as far as I know, he sculpted the whole Pillar of Souls also. Like, in other words, if you know, you know, Gary Tunnicliffe, like he'll be on interviews where he talks about how on Hellraiser 3, you know, he did not come to the United States. He stayed in England, but he was at, by that time at Image Animation. He had been made like a supervisor of the shop. And that guy, Paul Catlin, he was such a prolific, you know, 2d pen and ink artist as well you know he did storyboards he did sketches of the pillar of souls and everything he designed you know came up with ideas and designs for cenobites and stuff then he was also a great sculptor and he within like i think about a week or maybe 10 days he sculpted that giant pillar of souls all by himself i believe out of water-based clay on top of like a big wooden box shape you know that's quite a sculpture. That's a really impressive sculpture. And and I guess they had to do it. They had to do it uh, in that box shape so that the special effects people could put Doug Bradley inside uh, exactly. with, his, with his head coming out of the hole in the front. Exactly. And, you know, they had to make that in molded sections and then cast those sections. I believe it was cast in rubber latex and rubber and then painted to look bronze so that you know around doug's face where the hole was you know he could be in there from behind it and stick his head up inside there and it would be somewhat comfortable they probably had to put a little stool in there for him and stuff you know yeah um ryan what do you what do you have there uh do you have any other special items to show um yeah uh do you want to pick something or I can, I can just grab something and let's see. Something, something that you have that uh, means a lot to you. It doesn't have okay. to be rare. It doesn't have to be like, or it has a good story. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, so I would say. Hmm. Like, I love that story about your son, you know, that he drew that little drawing for you. Oh yeah. Right. Right. Um, and I, I wish you could see that. Um, I wish you could see that image because it's it's like this weird, uh, like big eyed alien kid with kind of like a pointy head, a little bit pointy. He's an aberration. Yeah, and he's got pointy yeah. ears like an elf and stuff. And then there's these sun rays like spiraling out, and it's it's such a cool um, design for a uh, baby from Aberat. That's cool. oh I. I see some Nightbreed stuff on Ryan's yeah, hands. I I, I want to say uh, Nightbreed in general. And let me grab all Clive's so prolific. Stuff. You know, he could just sketch something up like that in a matter of moments. That's so right. Here's my my uh, cop Nightbreed script copy with uh, signatures by tons of people. Oh, yeah. I uh, see Clive. I see Doug Bradley, Bradley, Nicholas Vince, and I guess Simon Banford. And who's that on the side there near uh, the uh, spine? Oh, that's, um. oh gosh, what's his name? Ashbury. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, right. I know who you're talking about. The guy who plays yeah, Ashbury. For, for some reason, I my met mind him. is blanking. Malcolm Smith. I met him on Malcolm Halloween Smith. night in L.A. There was a special oh, event yeah? where Clive reading, you know, horror stories by candlelight, you know, in front yeah. of a small crowd. Awesome. So... My my thing is, I guess, the whole Occupy Midian period and uh, getting to, you know, tour the country sort of with, I went to like four conventions and being able to to meet all of the Nightbreed um, actors and stuff. Actors. And and uh, so, and then the uh, the director's cut and the, the 2017 Cabal cut that Jose and I got to do. Uh, uh, He's holding them up to the camera we, commentary we to, a commentary on yeah and uh and then the special edition right of the director's cut oh yes yep yeah. and my original uh bare bones dvd also has Yay. a lot of autographs on it so i don't ever dare sell it Mine is uh, only signed by Ann Bobby because I forgot to oh, take really? it to the other convention. But oh, I do okay. have these two director's cuts that are signed by different people. <laughs> and one of them, Andrew Furtado, this is the right. guy who had, who edited, helped to edit the uh, director's cut with Mark Miller yeah. and Clive, says, Jose, I could have done it without you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty typical for him. Yes. Yeah. And uh, what else do we have? Oh, yeah. Um, and I have. 
one more. I have the Cabal audio tape still in plastic. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that in cassette tape? Yeah, cassette tape. I have that and, one, too. Uh, Nightbreed, the interactive movie video game for Amiga. Oh, you got a good story about that one. And Night that's pretty Breed, rare. The action game for Amiga. Oh uh, yeah. Those games so are that's the rare. I have PAL version. I have that second one as a cassette tape for the ZX Spectrum. Oh wow. Oh wow. That's right. Sinclair Research uh ZX Spectrum, which I played when I was a kid. Uh, th those are cool, Ryan. I, I have most of those too. And uh it's always cool because it, it's a, a progression, right? From the theatrical. Are those, are those games, are the technology for those games still viable? Can you still play them? I I do. I can. I mean, I have an oh. Amiga 500 still. So you I have can, a system. Yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, I it's, you, we, we would have to have an emulator to be able to play them and download uh, them off the internet because yeah. you can't even... You can't even plug a, a floppy drive into a, a Windows or Mac, you know, that will be able to play those discs. Uh, and you made YouTube game. reviews of the games too, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, I did. That's right. I did reviews of those. Um, and the the interactive movie, I could never get past Peliquin, you know. It's uh, the part where he's running behind you and you have to click yeah. the buttons real fast and then otherwise it'll catch you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're clicking buttons for each like footstep that you're doing, and you have to do oh, the wow. right rhythm, or else you mess it up. And Pelican, if Pelican catches up to you too soon, then he kills you. But if he catches you up to you just at the right moment, then he bites you, and it follows the story of the movie. And you become a night breed. Yeah, <laughs> I like the the action game better. It's more like a platformer style game, and it's would it be cool if they had a fun. virtual reality version? And yeah, you run with Shana Sassi at night, and so <laughs> that would be cool. If I can go next, I got. I'm going to yeah. start picking up the pace here because um, we we have at least maybe another twenty half an hour to go. I've got some small books that are um, pretty cool, but not that easy to find anymore. So I've got this Clyde Barker's First Tales, which is uh, some of Clyde Barker's juvenilia that he wrote when he was a teenage uh, kid. The candle in the cloud, and what was the other one, Ryan? Uh oh, the the is it the the candle in the cloud and the wood on the hill? The wood on so, the hill, that's right. Yes, that that came out from Seraphine Inc. as well. We've got this little guy here, the Infernal Parade, which is a little hardcover and uh, also pretty hard to they find. They made now. action figures called that too. They did. And years later, they released the blurbs that was on the back and the little story, The Legend of Primordium, came out as a, a single release, like a hardcover little book. So it's, you know. Right, that, because Primordium is the world of the tortured souls. Right, right. Where, you know, you can uh, you can uh, meet uh, mobsters and then monsters. Um, right. Yeah. What was the Vena Line Atomica and those figurines? I don't have those. Talisac. Tell us I yeah yeah I, I never got a chance to get those because i was still in portugal at the time and uh this this stuff was kind of hard to get because you'd have to import them they into big europe scales. they made big ones like 18 inch and they made small ones like eight inch or six inch yeah two books that mean a I lot to me for... small... you oh, would go on no yeah go ahead no no no, no go on <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> no i was just gonna uh finish with these two books which mean a lot to me. They're also books that came out a few years ago and uh, mm. not easy to find. One of them is uh, Clive Barker's Tonight Again, Oop, this one. And it's a collection of poetry and a couple of short stories, which is really good. I think it was selected by, um, it was edited by Ben Mears at the time uh, from Seraphin. Uh, really good stuff. Yeah. Um, it was it was like when I read this book, it was like, wow, finally some new stuff from Clive that's not, you know, some other stuff that he's already published before. This is unreleased material and I devoured Rare. it. Yeah. Rare. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's this one as well, which is a Chiliad, a meditation, which yeah. there were it's basically two short stories that he wrote uh, when he was feeling at the height of his depression in the early nineties. And uh it's a beautiful story. If you haven't heard of it i think you can still get it on kindle um they, through amazon 
They were mm -hmm. originally part of a, a short story collection, like an anthology with a whole bunch of authors and Clive Barker bookended the whole book. So the first story was at the very beginning of the book and the, 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 the second story was at the end. Um, and they um, and they were books about basically about the millenn the end of the millennium, you know, and all the fear of Y two K and stuff like that. That's what that Free millennium was tension. Like. Yeah, it was called Millennium in England, and it was called uh, Revelations in the United States. I remember huh. that, like yeah. the bad film. Yes, yeah, like the bad film. <laughs> the well, there's also yeah. a, a Clive Barker short story called Revelations that predates all of those. Oh uh, yeah, and the books of blood. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, so we got a lot of stuff. I mean, what else? Uh, do you have another video with more stuff to show us, Anna Nina? We yes. we have yes. Uh, yes, we have two more. There's um, Rawhead Rex. So this is a model um, kit. Yes. Yeah, so I'm gonna. Okay. Is that the Sean Nagel sculpt? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, awesome! Nice. This is working out. I'm so glad. Let so me, anyway, uh, so this is a, the screen what's here. called a Hold resin on. garage kit. Let me share the screen first. So I think it was called... one of Sean Nagel's first releases in the garage kit industry, right? Yeah, which means that it's super <gasps> rare, you know, because he uh, became a very well-known sculptor and went on to do a lot of things for a lot of companies like, you know, McFarlane oh, wow. Toys and, you know, a lot of different companies. But this rawhead rex is a really nice piece it's pretty large too. Uh, oh my drop. god it's it's a great paint job wow did you did amazing. you paint it Ed? me and me and my buddy guy guy helped me on this oh that's There's so cool fertility figure i see it in the, in oh, the, yeah. in the ground yeah, on the down on the ground between his legs down on the feet area oh such a good paint job that looks wow. really sweet and I think I have another unpainted, unbuilt copy still somewhere too. Is this just uh, just vinyl? No, this is a solid resin kit. Oh yeah, because oh, I was gonna say it looks almost like a ceramic statue. Right, and so and this is big, right? This is like yeah, thirteen like, inches at least. I'll, yeah, I'll restart it. 12, 12, 13 inches, and um, you know, it's it's uh, made in multiple pieces. Like there's the base is separate and. The uh, legs are separate, you know, they go up to about the waist and then the waist to the head, you know, the neck and head is a separate piece and the arms are separate pieces. The hands are separate. I have a picture of all the separate. pieces separated. Yeah. So you got the base, you got the pants of the feet, you've got a couple of, a uh, couple of hands and then you have the torso and the head. So, wow. wow. When you put this together, it looks so good. And yeah. the shoulders actually have separate armor pauldrons with little horns on the little them. skulls yeah. yeah they're like cow skulls yeah that's that's so cool <laughs> oh i'm so glad you could see it yeah yeah so yeah. i'm probably going to sell this because <laughs> you know i i have had it for a long time and oh, i'm man. meaning to who, sell off my collection who is that uh the rawhead guy i can't remember his name uh from from the oh there the, there was a Rogers forum right there used to be a, a, a guy really... who loves rawhead rex Yes, in, in the, the Time Winds forum where we met, uh, there used to be a guy, I forgot his name too, it was, it was a made-up name. But, I, I uh, met him at, uh, at the, I met him at Texas, the, Frightmare, Texas Weekend? Frightmare Weekend. Yeah, he had a big old bust yes. of Rawhead. That, you that could see had. it, yeah, you could see it in the, in the line for Clive Barker. Yeah, that's oh, when yeah. we realized, oh, that's the dude. Did he yeah, sculpt and, it? No, I think I, I think this was purchased. It brought it in. Yeah, yeah, he brought it in for Clive to sign, and Clive like colored a tattoo on on Rawhead's face with uh, markers. Uh, <laughs> meaning that <laughs> meaning that Clive didn't like it, and so he no, no, he he it. he said that he had originally thought that he would have like tribal tattoos or something. It was something oh, like I that. See. The guy oh, was like right cool. behind me in line, and I got to hang out at the table through like everybody's signings. Could you yes. tell what it was made of? Was it lightweight, like a foam latex thing? Uh, it, it looked like it, right? I yeah, I'm not sure. He also collected masks, expert. and he because had a. If it bust. was not made of foam, it would probably be so heavy he couldn't stand in line holding it. No, no, it was it was light, so it was probably yeah. hollow. Yeah, yeah, plaster or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, but the there are yeah. rawhead Rex busts on Etsy. Um, they look there more are. like masks. Yeah, there are. Oh. Um, 
I think this one is actually sold out that I'm looking at right now, but there, I looked up Rawhead Red Bust and something showed up on Etsy. But uh, yeah, I think the, the guy that Ryan is talking about, I think it was like a hollow bust. And um, yeah, because he was I holding so. it up. He was holding it up so you could see the head of Rawhead like rotate around, you know, over the people. Like it was, wow. like Rawhead was st <laughs> staying in line. Yeah. That's um, cool. I wish did I we had see him in in uh, at, had a at, full size in head. 2017? Also, was he there? You and I. Maybe did you see him too. Maybe that, I I I know for sure I saw him in 2011, but I think uh, I may have also. I remember him. seeing someone with a, a rawhead red mask, uh, rawhead yeah. Rex mask or bust on in the line yeah. when I was in Dallas. So yeah, I remember that guy. Wasn't being his there. name Fallon on uh, the time? Yeah, Fallon yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. Fa shout out to Fallon. If you're yes. listening to this or watching, if you're listening, yeah. drop us a line. Yeah. It's, a, it's a really cool uh, Rawhead Rex uh, bust. So uh, I think statue. the guy that actually made it for the original movie was Cliff Wallace. Right, worked, right. Went to work at Image Animation. What did Cliff Wallace also do? Didn't he apply? I think he might like have done Chatterer. Chatterer, yeah. Sculpted right, right, right. Yep. I think you're. I think you're right. So yeah, that's that's a cool item. Do you um? Let me see what I have here. I have a cool Hellbound poster, which oh, I'm yeah. going to get right now. Framed? Is we'll it find framed? out in or a second. Walked I, away. It looks like it's not framed yet. because So first, I just want to show the original VHS release for Hellraiser. No, it's a I have this in a, a clear acrylic box. It's a really cool right. tape. Does That's does that cool. one have the 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 the, the advertisements for the um the Hellraiser? Watch and wear, yeah. <laughs> I you know we had the um the coffee cup you know that said Hellraiser. Oh like really? A, yeah, it was kind of a, a midnight blue, you know, ceramic cup that was red Hellraiser right. logo lettering, with like white piping around it. That's a, a gorgeous uh, gorgeous Hellbound. Uh, poster and it looks like it's got doug bradley's signature on it talk wow. so that we can see it <laughs> nice yeah i think he stepped away from the microphone so i'm having to watch and wear off yeah <laughs> barbie wild awesome ah satin against your skin you know that, you want the hellraiser satin jacket anybody. i never knew anybody who had that did you <laughs> no no, no, I just watched that commercial so many times. If there's any fans right. out I've also there. got some Hellraiser books. I've got uh, Hellraiser The Toll by Mark Miller. Yeah. And then I have the two American and English editions of Clyde Barker's Scarlet Gospels. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Oh, wow. I swapped mine out. I, I don't play. have the American version anymore, just the UK one. Cool. We were just talking and just about to complete that. the whole thing with the Hellraiser theme, the Scarlet right. Box, which everybody that's a Hellraiser fan should have this yeah. wonderful yeah. Scarlet Box. Right. It's got uh, a Doug Bradley esque pinhead on the cover. And that's from Anchor Bay, too, right? All right. So that was my Hellraiser haul that I wanted to bring up. Yeah. Is that the Anchor Bay Scarlet Box? Yes. Uh, yes, no, it is. The, oh, Shock it, Factory, right? No, um, uh, Arrow. Arrow. Yeah. Oh, right. Yes. Anchor Bay doesn't exist anymore. This is Arrow Video. Yeah. It's the, it was a two, their HD Blu rays, 2K transfers, I think. Yeah. It yeah. comes with a little book by Phil and Sarah in there, too. Oh. So, yeah. Nice. That's a great, that's a great, uh, yeah. And I mean, I, I got so much stuff. I mean, yeah. I, I just pulled up a few things, but I've saved some of the best stuff for last, which I have a few originals by Clyde Barker back there, but I'm going to let, you know, Ryan, do you want to show something else? Uh, yeah. Let's see. Well, um, I know. Here we go. Mr. Be Gone. So this is one of my favorite uh, drawings that Clive ever did in a book. And actually, Clive liked it so much, he made his uh, assistant take a photo of it after it was done. Oh, that's cool. It's and it was like on the inside front yeah. cover or something? Yeah, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's kind of a picture of Jackabock, and he's looking kind of, he's got a curly tongue, and he's looking kind of 
a little bird like and demonic. And it says to Ryan, very best wishes, which he writes in everything. Yeah, it's like a oh, kind of a prince like, <laughs> like a monster face with kind of a very kind of flattish kind of top. Yeah, a little tuft of hair in the back of the head, some big, almost like snake like eyes. And then he's got a mouth that doesn't almost have he doesn't have a nose. But he's got a big mouth opening and a, a tongue curling up upwards coming out of it. Yeah. And uh, and it's it's really well done. I could see why Clive would want that like, taken a, a picture of. He was inspired. Mm -hmm. He was. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I was super happy with that one. That's you guys cool. you guys got a video uh, to pull up next? So yeah. we have we have a wishmaster. Oh, are okay. you able to Look, share screen that one? I, I sure can. Let me grab that. Oh, this, right. this one's the one we This one has its own to, audio, so we'll to, just let uh, it speak to for itself. Joe. Okay. <laughs> okay. Share screen. Because you, you put that Barbie, you know, poster. Yeah. The new Barbie movie. I'm going to do share sound also. There we go. Share. Here we, can everybody see it? Yeah. Well, yep, we see it. We I'm go. in. I have a bone to pick with Peter about my story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. wow i didn't think i was going to be listening to aqua at this time that was funny <laughs> oh that that looks amazing with the the bronze uh the bronze paint job on it, it looks so beautiful that's the twin of the one we sent uh pete, pete yeah oh, for his wow. birthday that looks that great so cool yeah <laughs> you guys gave it a, like a, a black uh, paint uh, at the bottom, Base. and then and then just kind yeah. of sponge the gold into the uh, the skin. Yeah. Just a, a nice black base, right? Yeah. And then I used uh, three different metallic colors and layers, and I used real soft, soft, nice brush to really dry brush it, it up. It. You hardly use any paint, but you layer it up. And so it builds up and builds up and builds up. It really brings up the texture of the skin on the on the sculpt. Yeah. You yeah, can now this is, you know, of course, this is from Wishmaster, you know, which Pete wrote. And the sculpture and the, the you know, his good friend, you know, Robert Kurtzman, Bob Kurtzman, he directed it and um, they, you know, worked together and, so I'm not sure if Bob actually sculpted this or what, but, you know, we had a bust that came directly from the movie mold, you know, and I was able to remold it so we could make this like a half mask sort of thing that you could hang up on the wall. You know? That is cool. And we gave that as a gift to Pete for his birthday. My parents used to have wall hangers, but usually they were either pirates or cowboys that they would hang on the wall. <laughs> I'm so glad that this, the uh, technology worked out at the last minute because yes. I was so disappointed if we couldn't show you that. Oh, is there a <laughs> no, yeah. old and everything? No, I didn't put that oh, one you up. Didn't put no. that one. Okay. But we have we yeah. have a video that we made of the whole process, including oh. the mold making and everything. Is but, that on YouTube? Uh, we could link it in no, the No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. We can share yet. it with you later if you want. But the thing that's funny about it was, you know, because of my blindness and you know, we're using a product you know nina's not familiar with and stuff so that we had a, a mishap you know like halfway through the beginning of it you know we had to stop tear it all off and start over <laughs> and yeah, that's that's molds, in the photos you know as well you know the process right. our, our mold stayed sticky <coughs> and it just wouldn't cure mm. and so we had to tear it off but that was because yeah. you know we were adding a pigment to it so that you could see the layers you know like when you put on a coat of red, you know, you'd see that, okay, the whole thing is covered now. And then you'd put on a coat of blue, you know, and you could see the whole thing's covered. So once we started adding pigment to it, it was not curing properly. And I realized that the pigment was either contaminated or something was wrong yeah, with it. Destabilized so it. we tore it all apart, cleaned it up and started <laughs> over. And that time it yeah. worked. <laughs> And then we just uh, I fell ran. into the swamp and burned, burned <laughs> down. down. <laughs> so we but we built another one. Yeah. 
uh, it's funny at, at my work uh brant that i work with he's also in our jericho squad games he quotes that all the time when we're talking about houses that are sinking into the swamp <laughs> yeah because we actually have that's a real problem that people have with permafrost melts and houses sink into the swamp uh, yep. <laughs> and since you guys brought up um wishmaster i'll bring up these two editions of hellraiser screenplay for bloodline mm -hmm. by peter atkins they were put out by Encyclopocalypse. You got the regular version, and then you got the little mass market paperback version. So I got both of them. Uh, great story. If you're a fan of Hellraiser Bloodline, read the original screenplay. It was supposed to be so much more. Um, but yeah, now we have a chance to read that properly. And yeah. uh, and Ryan, you got a lot of a lot of, a lot of sketches from Clive and books. You got. Like I said the other day, you pretty much got, you know, um, you're the master of autographed copies of Clive Barker books. I, well, I I, uh, I went to a lot of uh, book signings and stuff, and I would bring a duffel bag with me. One time, uh, actually, there was one time at the, um, when when I was at, at the Golden Age Collectibles in Seattle, and they told us we could only bring two things, and Clive could see I was disappointed. He said, you know... I'm having another signing at Bailey. This was in 95. It was for Sacrament. He said, I'm having another signing at Bailey Coy Books in Seattle, and you can bring as much stuff as you want. And Bailey oh. Coy was kind of like a, it was kind of like a, um, a more like gay specialty kind of bookstore, I guess. So anyway, the, the line wasn't as long. And, you know, and I went there and I brought a huge duffel bag full of stuff. And the, the, this lady behind me was super mad. Wow. She said she said some of us go to book more than one book signing. So we get our stuff signed, you know, we don't get it all signed at once. So... Oh, ho ye <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Like what? You should have said, well, Clive is a personal friend of mine. <laughs> well, in 95. Yeah, he well, he did remember my name. That that was I was pretty excited about that at that time. He said, Well, I told Ryan to bring all of his collection and he did it. Uh, <laughs> that's a great story um end of his word yeah oh do and we have any also when hmm. he signed my nightbreed uh when he signed this that was oh, the that blue uh, the laser disc yeah the yeah. nightbreed laser disc and he signed my of course sacrament and um a bunch of other stuff I've got a really, I've got some really special things back here, but I'm going to see if Ed and Nina, do you guys have more stuff to show? Well, we, that I, was think, all we recorded, I think we recorded yeah. all, but I was going to just say real quick about, have any of you guys got any like special t-shirts, you know, like very rare or limited edition type t-shirts? <laughs> I, I do. Ryan I this... is pulling up his Clive Barker podcast t-shirt. Like My it's 10th anniversary <laughs> t-shirt designed by Jose Letao, wherever that's, he's at. That's right. I got a black Sabbath paranoid, but uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that we got one or I got one from uh, Clive personally. That was from Lord of illusions. It's the oh, uh, tarot. That's so card. cool. You know, the one yeah. where all the, the knives are coming down. Ten of swords. Yeah. Are down. Yeah. That, a, that would be that awesome. That was the was it was it the the card printed on the T-shirt or was it drawn by by Clive or it was a card printed on T-shirt? But I think the art of that t that uh, tarot card is by Clive. I think mm -hmm. so too. I know I know the design you're talking about. Yeah. And, I think and it's inspiring his. of what you know the stage show is where you know the the uh, weapon you the know comes down. To kill Swan's someone. last act yeah. with the I swords. Think... Because I've got this script of it, and I think that picture is on the inside cover, if I remember right. Also, it was very oh, inspiring. Yeah, also, it is. It, it should be. Was so powerful, you know, for the T-shirt. I do yeah. remember that that image was on the cover of the uh, screenplay. So I have there a black T-shirt with white ink, you know. Of yep. That. Ryan it's... is pulling up the image of it. Nina, is this the one? Yes, that's it. Okay. Yep. All right. We found the it. Ten, so that was, ten of swords. So that I was think. given to me, you know, in person by Clive at the Lord of Illusions, you know, shoot that I was. It's in at. white on a black we T-shirt. We were invited to be in the audience for that at the Pantages. At the theater. Pantages, yeah. yeah. And Dell was Del there too. You can see yeah, Dell. Del. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. I'm I'm jealous. 
<laughs> well, we also got to visit not only that day, that set, but we also got to go to the location where the um, the house of all the, you know, the uh, cult members were. And you could also see the, um, you know, the underground effect of how, you know, like the camera goes down underground and you can see where Nix is down underground buried, you know, where they get him out of ground and the lights of the headlights are out in the desert, you know, when they find his corpse out there. Where was that house, that house set? Inside of a studio, inside of a, you know, LA oh, studio. It was cool, built cool. like, it was so weird how, it was built in such a way where, you know, like at the edge of where inside the house that would be the floor and that would be the the uh, the wainscoting or the, the edge of the boarding that's right at the mm -hmm. bottom. of. And then in that house, it was as though they had torn out the floor and now there was like another two or three feet that would go down to the dirt. So right. on the inside of that set, it was like a dirt floor. But it wasn't really. It was all set. You know, it was all fake. That that's supposed to be the part where the uh, the 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 cult uh, members yeah. would uh, sink into, I guess. Yeah, right. and then and, that's an and elevated stage the when they do that. And everything were all graffitied and full of yeah. gory, bloody stuff all over the walls and stuff, and it was really cool I mean, kind of like there. a kind of like a marilyn manson death cult a graffiti house exactly. like in, exactly. did you guys know that that ranch where the manson family hung out was I know same, exactly where you mean yeah was the same ranch from bonanza the tv show oh, oh really yeah they shot out there yeah they did shoot it out there and then it was occupied by the manson family so I've got some stuff here. This is like the very few sketches that I own from Clive. The very So this is a part where if you're a Clive Barker art, art owner or from that group, you're probably going to be like, hey, you should post that over there. So I got these years ago. Um, and this one, I think this one's not signed, but this one looks like it's from Clive's 70s period. It's mm. uh, two um, two body shapes hugging each other in like what looks to be a um perspective enhancing rug on the floor it's got a lot of diagonal perspective lines on the rug and you got these two uh androgynous figurines just hugging i love this one it's just so beautiful it's, uh, and it's ink on paper that's or? amazing yeah like it nine. is it is pencil and then inked over you can see the faint pencil design underneath and uh, that's that's one of them. So I need to frame that. Here's one that's a study for an element that shows up in Aberat. A little, one of those little drawings that shows up on the side of a page. Uh, this is Clive's original idea for that. Looks like a study for that particular painting. Oh, wow. Yeah. I remember seeing that when you uh, when you got it. That's amazing. Sort of looks like a figure wearing an armor made of a face. Yes, it's, 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 that's a perfect description there. <laughs> and here's another piece de resistance. So this is the Clyde Barker's First Tales Deluxe Edition oh, yeah. that, that came out. Um, comes in a little box with the candle in a cloud and the cloud inside the cloud shape. We see like a spider web and it's got this golden candle and Ryan's pulling it up as well because he also has a copy. And this is how it looked like on the inside. Yeah. And so here's the thing. If you're seeing this cover, here's the idea that Clive came up with for the cover of the book. Oh, that's the Yay. spider web and the candle. So this one is that, that study for the image that ended up in the cover. Is that that piece you just bought and it just arrived? Right. Yes. Yeah. It arrived from the UK. And this one says by Clive, it says here, flame is white, uh, wick is black, candle is white with uh, brown outline, and web is white on a black uh, card. So, so I think kind that's of his, his, his directions to, uh, to Seraphim, to like Ben and Christian maybe on how to make the cover of that. Uh, that's that. right. It's like so, printer's notes. Yeah. Yes. And this one. It's just a piece of paper, and this looks to be just made in Sharpie. But um, I, 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 I love this because it, it's Clive's yeah. design idea for the book cover. And I've got one last piece. It's a piece of history. This one might, might 
be familiar to people who own mm -hmm. Shadows in Eden. You can find oh, this yeah. in one of the pages. And also, yeah. I think this showed up in one of those illustrator books, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you this have the is, original. Yep. Yep. That's kind of a weird monster with some weird antlers on the top of his head. Yeah. And uh, it's it's just such a good, tiny little thing. Yeah. This is how big it Yay. is. Wow. And so that's, that's, that's it. Awesome. That's all. That's all I've got. I'm not a big Clive Barker art collector because I don't have that amount of disposable money. income. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but money. there are some people out there, especially in the Clive Barker art owners mm -hmm. group, that they post like these gigantic paintings. And I'm like, oh my God, you yeah. know, I would I would love having that in my house. Or even um, Mark is, has we much. can maybe right. throw a challenge out there you know because maybe people didn't get a chance to join us because of timing or whatever but if you've got uh cool stuff that you want to show off out there uh post a link to make a video of it on youtube or whatever post a link and we'll uh we'll share it yeah, yeah. send send stuff. us photos we can add those to the blog post later or you know yeah. share it on our podcast page uh please send this stuff and i'm sorry that we couldn't make this open but as the moment we opened up the zoom we got a whole bunch of like spam and and trolls and whatever so oh, we yeah, apologize yeah. to everybody who uh tried to join us and couldn't but yeah, yeah this has been they another living uh, under bridges yes, yeah. <laughs> yes I know. They, they, they totally came out from under their bridges for that they totally yeah. did um yeah. but so but yeah we this... had to kick out three times but That's like right. people who do cosplay and all that kind of stuff send us oh, your yeah your videos and yeah i would love to see more clive barker character cosplay um i think Aberat would be something that people definitely could come up with some amazing cosplay yeah. um or these new cenobites from the yeah new right oh, right i found a guy on etsy he's already selling a copy of the box from hellraiser 2022 on holo really You're yeah God. i think he, re he created oh. it but he probably went you know well, the, frame the by four, frame. there's there would be four of them, right? There's uh, four he just has the one cubic sides. one. He just oh, has okay. the one shape, the first shape. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm I'm, it, I'm curious to see if Max is going to do those too. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. So. I don't think so. Yeah. Anytime soon, he's his hands are full with, you know, just keeping up with his orders of all the normal. Oh. Yeah. configurations and the but the other, but this guy on etsy he 3d prints that thing and i think he might have been like a 3d artist he might have gotten oh, some okay. ideas from frames of the movie and he created his own version of it and it looks pretty cool but you know i didn't yeah. get one yet because <laughs> what does he charge i think he was charging around 90 something dollars for it oh, okay. wow so, that's reasonable price yeah it's yeah uh, it's a 3d printed thing but it's on etsy oh, okay. um I would, I would definitely have... rather buy an officially licensed one, but, uh, you know, if they don't that's... exist, what are you going to do? I mean, we can't buy the movie either, except. A, yeah. A stupid bear. Well, bones that was the UK reason why DVD. I released the original Simon Says art, you know, to the fans, because, you know, Bob Keen gave it to me for that reason to, so the fans could make their own boxes. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, send us stuff. Uh, if you have a piece of art or if you have something that really means a lot to you, even if it's an old thumbed up paperback, just give us a little history on it and why it means so much to you and your collection or any testimonies about when you met Clive. And if he did any sort of doodles on your books, you know, give it, you know, send us an image or make it like Brian said, a YouTube video. Yeah. Or any comments I mean, about what we've shared today. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that obviously we could go on forever. I've got stories about just about everything that I own. And so I felt like I had to kind of rein myself in a little bit. Uh, but we but, still yeah. filled up plenty of time, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and coming soon, uh, we're going to be going back to Clive Barker's A to Z of horror. Uh, we're sticking it out on the letter Z. We're going to hold on as long as we can. We're going to do Z for zombie and uh, continue on with Romero film day of the dead. Awesome. Uh, that one, yeah, was uh, not as commercially successful, right, or or critically successful as Dawn of the Dead, but it's it's kind of a cult favorite now. Well, it went out unrated to the theaters, yeah. and that hurt it, I'm sure. But boy, was it gory! I mean, it had yeah. some of the first, you know, really unrated gore stuff, you know, like what we would now consider today torture porn. Yeah, 
Yeah. So and, you can uh, uh, you can listen to that uh, commentary track. You can give your aunt a call and ask her to come over and watch Day of the Dead with you. And Alicia. And Alicia. And Alicia. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Bob, looking forward to that one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. You want me to salute that pile of puke or whatever? <laughs> And it's really the movie where it started with that concept that the zombies uh, were now becoming the norm for humanity on Earth, and they were also starting to evolve. And that yeah. moves on all the way to like City of the Dead, where you see the zombies start to make some strategic, you know, uh, yeah. they're evolving. Yeah. yeah, right. Which makes sense. I mean, ultimately, at the end of that, what would what would we find ourselves in? Like a I Am Legend kind of thing, where the vampires would be in fact scared of the uh, non vampires because they would come yeah. in the middle of the night and just kill them. <laughs> right. So yeah. we'll also have more classic commentaries, um, more, another episode of Jericho squad 77. And we're going to um, continue on uh, more interviews and more news episodes as well. And look forward to our next drops that we're going to be doing soon. Yeah. We'll have what have, what have interview you, what, you, with the what can you tell us? Oh, okay. Well, we're going to have another interview with the Russells and that one's going to be really good because, you know, when we did our first interview, unfortunately, you know, we had not, you know, I will never see the film, but I had not heard the film and Nina had not seen the film. So there were certain things we did not know, like for instance, mm -hmm. the chatterer, spoiler alert, mm -hmm. chatterer mm -hmm. dies or gets exploded apart or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> And other things like that. So we couldn't ask about that. But now that we do know all those things and we got a second interview with the Russells, they gave us a whole bunch of lowdown on much more, you know, scoop about oh, what, yeah. what down. And well, yeah, you couldn't and, even spoil the movie because back then it wasn't out right. yet. Yeah. Right. And, and uh, then we also have a wonderful interview with Keith Thompson, who is the artist designer of all the Cenobites. And he also, you know, even designed like some of the architecture of the house and the cage and, you know, Leviathan coming down from up in the air. And, you know, like just uh, the, he worked with the box, you know, like all kinds of stuff. Uh, so did he come up with the the metal framing uh, that yes. closes up the house and yes. stuff like that. Yes, yes. Because I really thought that was an interest, such a cool idea to have like a metal, um, yeah. a physical he calls it a cage. Yeah, he calls like, it like Faraday cage. Right. And a yeah, cold Faraday cage. Right. Like yeah. a hellish so Faraday cool. cage. Yeah. Yeah, that was a really you neat idea. Because I always thought that keep them in, or you can keep them out. You know, or you can yeah. trap them. Or... He called them a cult, a cult Faraday. Because I like I like the idea that uh, demons can be hurt by iron and stuff like that when that comes up in fantasy, um, mm -hmm. you know, that, yeah, like uh, it depends on the magic, you know, like if you, that you can bind mix, them, you know, yeah, you can right. mix yeah. certain alloys and things like that, like all, you know, like lore of, you know, Lovecraft and yeah, you know, and D&D &D type stuff and everything at all or, bl or Black Sunday or the Mask of the Demon, where there's a metal yes. mask that yes. binds the witch. And then Clive yeah, yeah. uses that in Lord of uh, Lord of Illusions for Nyx. Yeah. And then in this Hellraiser for Hulu, they use that for the Faraday cage on top of the house, which just it's so cool. Yeah. Right. And then the thing, too, is that, you know, at one point in the film, you can see like blueprints on a desk or something like that. And that's for the cage and the house and, you know, like the control panel where he can make things move and open and close and lock. That's right. And stuff. That's right. I've got those screenshots from the movie. I'm actually looking at them right now. <laughs> yeah. Where it's got like little text uh, about what the Cenobites do and stuff like that. That that movie has so many cool shots of uh, behind the scenes. It, it makes you feel like that they, they actually filled up the whole history with backstory, but you barely see any of it. And that's yeah. why I want there to be like more, an art more. book about Hellraiser, you know, like, yeah. like they do for all these movies now. It's like, I would, Oh, I yeah. want to do it. I want to be the one to write it. You know, like in other words, that's I'm, I'm lobbying for that to get, get our interviews either on the you know dvd blu-ray release or make a, yeah. a behind the scenes book or something like that yeah know? yeah, yeah. Our hellraiser the art of the so, film so yeah. we got the you know the keith thompson 
interview that will also be dropping. And then we got one with Mikey Rotella, who is the sculptor of the new Chatterer. Oh, nice. So yeah, well, we'll, we'll be watching out for that and we'll share it around as soon as we find yeah, out. Yeah, we'll come on the air and, and drop a little nugget, you know, and, yeah. and let you know right we'll before we release yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, sounds fun. Can't wait. Okay. Exclusive. We promise no more Barbie girl. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Pete. <laughs> oh, man. Martin Mercer and Pete mixed together. <laughs> yeah. I've been listening to Martin Mercer's podcast, uh, The Wrong Side of Hollywood. Yeah, me too. Isn't the, it fun? Yeah, like the it. last episode, they were basically just eating throughout the whole episode. They were just talking about all the snacks they were having, and it was making me so hungry. I know. Oh, talking <laughs> about stuff you could only get in England, right? I think. Their yes. Friend. They had their German friend come. He brought a cooler. <laughs> yeah, he brought the sausage. A special German deli, That's and he brought cool. all kinds of cool stuff. And then uh, they were talking to him because he was a storyboard artist as well. Yeah. That's He's right. So, yeah. yeah, if you want to listen to Martin Mercer's podcast, it's that way. And it's uh, Wrong Side of Hollywood. Uh, you can find it wherever you find all those podcasts. And we yeah. highly suggest it. Shameless <laughs> plug, shameless <Yes>. plug. <laughs> yeah. All right. And, <laughs> and this podcast having no beginning will have no end. Thank you for joining us and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode as well as news and reviews can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker podcast or BarkerCast is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. You can chat with us on our Facebook BarkerCast listeners group, our Facebook page, Twitter, or our new Discord server. Watch for our annual Kickstarter fundraisers to get some cool stuff, and you can buy t-shirts on our TeePublic store. Go to TeePublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Opening music by Ray Norrish. End credit music by Matt Furness. Thanks for listening.